All right, we're going to be doing again a uh, little uh, teaching on the Hebrew roots of end time prophecy. We believe that there's a context to the scriptures. Uh, everything that Jesus said was as the Jewish Messiah. And this is what he said 2,000 years ago in Luke 21, verse 11. There will be great earthquakes in various places, famines, pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs. From where? From where? Okay, from heaven. That means look up. We're always looking down. Make sure we look up. That's what I'm going to try to direct your attention to tonight. Look up. God said in the generation before he returns, look up. Everyone say look up. Very good. In Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 to 13, we have the sixth seal open. If you haven't uh, gotten a teaching on, on Revelation, We've done plenty of it, and I even have a summary called The Most Logical Timeline of Revelation. All right, that's all uploaded free on YouTube, but if you wanted to dig deeper, we have a whole series at discover.org.au for that. So here's what the sixth seal represents, and I believe that we're either already in it or we're just waiting any moment for it to open. All right, and yet I don't believe it's the tribulation. Not yet, not the time of tribulation or the time of Jacob's trouble. Revelation chapter 6, verse 12, I watched as the Lamb opened the sixth seal. Here is the order of events. Number one, a powerful earthquake struck. In the Greek, a mega quake. Maybe it was the Japanese tsunami. Maybe it was the uh, Haiti earthquake, which was the most fatal earthquake in human history. 300,000 people died in that. So number one, a powerful earthquake. Number two, the sun turned as black as sackcloth made of hair and the full moon turned as red as blood. Already explained that there's a very easy understanding of that. The sun is time to go dark every time that there is an eclipse. That's only possible from the vantage point of earth. God made the distance of the earth, the size of the moon, and all of those things to correlate so that we could have a perfect total solar eclipse. We're the only place in the universe that we're aware of that can see a total solar eclipse. Not only that, we also have lunar eclipses. And that's when the moon appears to turn red. All right? Second order of event. Third, we haven't talked much about the stars fell from the sky to the earth like figs, dropping from a fig tree when it is shaken by a strong wind. And we could conjecture about that, but we're not going to touch on it today. We just want to touch on those first two things. Number one, a powerful earthquake. People say, well, earthquakes happen all the time. But look at the graph. This is not a prophetic graph. This is the USGS uh, graph of worldwide deadly and destructive earthquakes. And since the last 100 years, more than 100 years now, 113 years, can you see that there is an increase in megaquakes? Obviously, we're not making it up. Jesus says this is a prelude to the tribulation. It's not yet the tribulation. The seals are not tribulation seals. They're pre-tribulation seals. Next, starting from this year, and we're already coming towards the end of this year, starting at 2013, there will be not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, but eight signs in the heavens that we are already aware of before the 70th anniversary of Israel. And why is 70 important? Because uh, Israel was given 70 years in Babylonian captivity. Israel was given 70 years from the time that Jesus was born to the time that its temple was destroyed. So there's something significant about the fact that Israel is about to turn 70 years old since it was born again in the 1940s. And you can count 1947 from the UN Resolution 181 or 1948 when they actually had a war and declared independence on the 14th of May 1948. Either way, Whatever date it is, to be exact, we're not sure, but we're coming up to this landmark 70 years. Exciting. Goosebumps. Exciting stuff. See, for many, many years, people have simply said, well, 
you know, we're not sure when the end will be. We're not sure if the Bible prophecies are coming true because each generation looks at the world that it lives in and then it says, oh, this is the catastrophe. This is the terrible thing that's going on and it must relate to the Bible. And then, it, of course, it didn't. Like the generation who lived through World War I must have thought that's the end of the world and it wasn't. Because Israel hadn't come back yet. It was the wrong timeline. Anybody who read the Bible could have, could have explained that to them. But see, people don't look at the Bible. They look at their own circumstances and think, oh, World War I, many people die, must be the end. Then, World War II. Hitler was a great uh, evil dictator. Killed six million Jews. It looked like a terrible time. It's called the Holocaust. And certainly there would have been Christians at that time who said, look at that, this is the end. You know, and they go out with the placards and they shout the end of the world. And so the world has become almost immunized. They've become hardened. They've become calloused to the true signs which are explained in Daniel, Ezekiel, the book of Revelation. There is a plain order of events. And that's what we must believe, not just there's some catastrophe, there's some hurricane, there's some earthquake. There is a real, clear order. And that's why God was very detailed. And the book of Revelation is almost difficult to understand until you, you proceed towards the timeline and the clock starts ticking. And then you realize, my goodness, it's all falling into place. So there has to be some objective signs. And signs in the sky, like the darkening of the sun, the moon turning into blood, these things are not fudgeable. You can't fake it. They've been timed. And in the history of uh, 2,000 years of the church age, there have only been seven lunar tetrads, or uh, seven times where the moon turns to blood exactly on the feast days of the Lord. And that's what God is talking about, that there will be signs in the heaven that correlate to the things that he wrote about and predicted in the Bible. Th those are the signs we're to look for. And so there are now, that we're aware of, definitely coming eight different signs. They will never occur again in our lifetime. Even if you could live to, for 100 years old, they're never going to happen again. And they're starting real soon. Here we go, number one. We've got Comet Ison. Comet Ison is coming. You say, well, comets come all the time. Yes, they do. But not the brightest comet, not something that is predicted to be the brightest comet ever. That potentially, they say, NASA says, could be as bright as the moon. I think that would strike fear in people's hearts if they saw something as bright as the moon, two moons, and they didn't know that it was coming. It's going to be as bright as that? I don't know. I'm just quoting you what NASA said. They're touting this as the brightest comet of the century, the brightest comet of our lifetime. And guess what? It goes to perigee, or the closest point to the sun, on the 28th of November, 2013. Look it up. God doesn't work on the Gregorian calendar. Look it up on the Hebrew calendar. What day is it? It's the first day of Hanukkah. We know that God works on His Hebrew calendar. It's no coincidence that this great light is going to come on the Feast of Lights. And it's only a matter of weeks away. In fact, Comet Ison is going to start becoming visible in September. It's like tomorrow. So we don't know what day, but that's what they predicted. Then it's going to get brighter and brighter. And it's going to get uh, very close to the sun on the 28th of November 2013. Brightest comet ever. Interesting. 15th of April next year, we will have the first blood moon that occurs on a Jewish feast that is Passover. And I'm going to give you a new name for the Tetrad. The Tetrad is four blood moons, consecutive blood moons, that fall on God's Jewish feasts. I'm going to give you a new term. This is a war Tetrad. I've said to you before, I don't know what's going to happen. I have my belief that it's going to be related to the temple, but I do know one thing. Every time a tetrad came before that fell on God's feast in the past century, a war started with Israel. And every time a war started with Israel, Israel won and Israel took territory. So it looks like either the temple is going to be rebuilt or Israel is going to take some major territory this time because there are scriptures that say Israel is going to take its inheritance, it's going to take Jordan, 
possibly take parts of Saudi Arabia. They have barely scratched the land, the territory that was promised to Abraham. They're living on a sliver of land that is the size of the state of New Jersey. And everyone around them is bigger, more populated, has greater land mass, and they're all fighting to destroy this one little nation and trying to eat up its territory. And every time they start a war, Israel gains more territory. I think uh, Scotty from Eternal Rhythm Flow had this phrase. He said, every time the Palestinians start a war, Israel gains more. That's the fate. That's what's going to happen. But it looks like from Psalm uh, 83 that Israel might actually suffer some casualty this time. They really escape in the first Iraq war. They escape in the second Iraq war. Um, many, many bombs Saddam Hussein uh, lobbed at them and very, very few casualties. But it looks like the next, next one is going to be disastrous. It's going to be a big war. So the Tetrad's about to come. When it came in 1949, in the last century, the war had already started in 1948. This one is coming in 2014. It would not be violating the pattern if the war started anytime soon. And Obama is already looking for an excuse to go into Syria. This is how world wars start, by the way. You go into one nation, and then their allies counter, and then the allies counter, and then suddenly everyone's pulled in. If you haven't followed the news, uh, Iran has already said, first of all, Syria says, if you attack us, we're going to attack Israel. It's got nothing to do with Israel. Israel's not attacking Syria. But they said if America attacks Syria, Syria will attack uh, Israel. Then Iran says, if America attacks Israel, Iran, sorry, if America attacks Syria, Iran will attack Israel. Then Lebanon has said, if America attacks Syria, Lebanon will attack Israel. Can you see what's happening? This is how World War I started. I can do that another time and teach you another time. But people get pulled into a world war because of the allies and the treaties that they have with each other and because of their strategic interests. So something very disastrous is on our doorstep and it could trigger at any time. And we're coming into a season where all the signs are pointing that now is probably the time. So the war tetrad is going to begin on the 15th of April, 2014. Then we have the second lunar eclipse on the 8th of October, 2014, a blood moon on Sukkot. That is the seventh feast of God in the Bible. Then we have a total solar eclipse on the 20th of March, 2015, which happens to be the first of Nisan, that is the religious new year on God's calendar. And is considered by the Jewish rabbis a sign to the Gentiles. Could that be a possible date for, say, a rapture of the Gentile church? Very possible. Then again, the, uh, any Feast of Trumpet, which is the new year, uh, the civil new year, that's also a suitable date for the rapture. Then on the 4th of April, 2015, we have another blood moon, the third blood moon in the series on Passover. Then on the 13th of September, 2015, we have a partial solar eclipse on it's around Elul 29 and Tishri 1st. That's the end of the year and the beginning of the year. What's so big about that? Well, it happens to be the seventh anniversary of the last economic downturn. And, it, and that economic downturn was the seventh anniversary of the previous economic downturn. So if you look on the Gregorian calendar, you can't tell when the market will crash. But if you just looked on God's calendar, you say, Elul 29, yep, better, better sell those stocks before. Because on Elul 29, twice on a seven-year cycle, something disastrous happened. And on the next one, the next seventh anniversary, there's going to be a solar eclipse as well. Interesting. The fourth lunar eclipse of the Tetrad happens, will happen on the 28th of September 2015. It will be Sukkot and it will be a supermoon. Now, a supermoon is when the moon gets very close because the lunar orbit is elliptical. Sometimes it's far, sometimes it's close. And so the size of the moon appears to be different depending on the time of year that you look at it. So a supermoon is very special and rare. Now you get a supermoon that is also a lunar eclipse. Very rare. 
but we have a supermoon that is a lunar eclipse on God's holy feast. Completely unprecedented. Something very special marked out in the sky saying this date is a super date. God created the sun, the moon, the earth, the stars to point to his son Jesus Christ. And this sign is a big sign. But we're not finished. Then we have the sign of the woman clothed with the sun, the moon at her feet, the 12 stars around her head, the sign of the constellation of Virgo rising from the vantage point of Jerusalem with all those elements in play on the 23rd of September 2017. And at first when I heard that, I said, that's very interesting. I mean, that's already very, very interesting. 2017. But it only dawned on me later, wait a second, 2017 is the Jubilee of the city of Jerusalem. The the Jubilee is the 50th anniversary of Israel taking Jerusalem in 1967. And the Jubilee is a very holy time. In fact, it's a very joyful time. It's called the time of setting free. It's the time of liberation, the time of liberty, the time of letting debtors go free, the time of setting slaves to go free. Oh, man, this is a very special time. Do you think God knows it's the Jubilee of Jerusalem? Yeah. The constellation Virgo is going to rise, fulfilling the sign in Revelation chapter 12. There will be a sign in the sky, the woman clothed with the sun, the moon at her feet, 12 stars at her head. It happens to be the 50th anniversary of Jerusalem. We'll come back to that. And then on the 14th of May, 2018, Israel will celebrate its Independence Day on the Gregorian calendar. But if you look on their Jewish calendar, it happens to be slightly earlier on the 19th of April, 2018. Either way, that will be a 70th anniversary of the state of Israel. And we know for the past two times, uh, major things happened. When Israel was in Babylon 70 years, they were let go, they, were, they went free after 70 years. That's the whole point of Daniel's book and, and his prayer that God, 70 years are up, take us home. Ooh, hallelujah. Then the next time, they really rebelled. So instead of going home, their temple and their city was destroyed in 70 AD because they didn't believe in the Messiah. That's the only major sin that you could trace back to that time period. They crucified their own Messiah and rejected him as he predicted. And he said, not one stone will be left upon another of the temple. Not the temple mount, not the, not the wailing wall. Those stones remain there. But the temple, gone. After 70 years of being very patient, sending his son, all that was fulfilled. And the Jews were dispersed for nearly 2,000 years. We are coming up to the next 70-year mark. Exciting? Major signs? Not something we're making up, not something we can fudge. It's fixed in astronomy. But we're not done. 2017 is not only the 50th anniversary of Jerusalem, it's the 50th anniversary of Roswell, the most famous UFO incident. An incident where people believe that a spaceship crashed in New Mexico and there was a major government cover-up. If you study into it, it's it's amazing. There's more secrecy around Roswell than around American nuclear warheads. You need a higher level of security clearance to get any file on Roswell than you would to get information about America's uh, military capability. Don't you think that's astounding? Something strange happened. Do we believe it happened exactly as the conspiracy people say? I don't know. That's why it's called a conspiracy. I don't know. But it's also the 50th anniversary of Roswell. 2017 will also be the 50th anniversary of the greatest archaeological find ever. The Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered in 1947. We're coming up to the 50th anniversary. It is also the 70th anniversary of the UN resolution which created the nation of Israel and made Jerusalem, instead of a Jewish capital, an international capital. That was UN Resolution 181, approved in November 1947, which arguably can be actually the birthday, the true birthday of the nation of Israel. Then we have a cycle going in 1947, 1967, and now 2017. Perfect cycle of 50 and a cycle of 70. 
God likes these numbers. If you don't know, get my book, The Divine Code, and read it. Because I explain all those numbers in great details. God proves himself through numerical patterns. He does these things because he wants us to know he's real. He's real. He's not like all the other gods. He's a mathematical God, a rational God, a logical God. He's the God, the only God who knows the future. Can you say amen? Another interesting thing that I've not heard anyone say in 2017 is that 2017 is the 500th anniversary of what? Do you know? Do you know that you are Protestant Christians? If you're a born-again Christian, you're considered a Protestant Christian. The Protestant Reformation was ignited in 1517 when Martin Luther posted his 95 Theses at his church door in Germany. Do you think God knows that date? God timed it so the printing press would be ready. God timed it so that Christians all over Europe would erupt with revival fire and say, we don't believe that being, we can be saved by good works. We don't believe we can be saved by following man's opinion and man's laws. We don't believe we can be saved by our own religion. Not even our own religion can save us. Not even our own good works can save us. We must be saved through faith in the perfect work of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and who rose again on the third day. That was a, a spontaneous Holy Ghost eruption that was triggered in 1517. We come to the 500th anniversary of that in 2017. Five is the number of grace. Fifty is also a number of grace and a number of the Holy Spirit and, a, and the number of Pentecost. I would only imagine 500. I never got that far. 500 has to be multiplied grace, multiplied Pentecost, multiplied revival. We're coming up to that in 2017. I've never heard anyone mention that yet. Not only is it significant to Christians, if you are a Jew, that date should be significant to you because in 1517, that was the time when the Turks took the Jewish capital. 1517. And if the Jews would look it up, their own rabbi named Rabbi Judah ben Samuel predicted ages ago, back in the, like, I think in the 1100s, predicted that from that time when Jerusalem gets captured by a Gentile power, there would be 10 Jubilees. What's 10 Jubilees? A Jubilee is 50 years times 10 is 500 years. And he predicted accurately the rebirth of the nation of Israel in 1947, the capture of Jerusalem in 1967. And he says, at the end of the 10th Jubilee will be the Messianic age. What's that? What's the end of 10 Jubilees? Counting from 1517, 2017. That's not the Christian perspective. We have our own reason why we believe that's important from our own Reformation, but the Jews themselves also have to watch the exact same time period. Is there a coincidence in God? Coincidence is not a kosher word. It is a God incident. Will we be here to see 2017? Maybe, but I hope not. I hope we will run as hard as we can. We will tell the gospel to as many people as we can, and there's never been a better time. The way you can strike up a conversation with anybody is just point them to prophecy. Turn on the news. Tell them what's going on in the news and say, there it is in the Bible. Syria, Damascus destroyed, there it is, Isaiah 17. The war with the Arab states, in which there'll be heavy casualty, there it is, Psalm 83. The war with somebody attacking them from the north, there it is, Ezekiel 38. It's all there. What an easy way to open a conversation with somebody and share the good news with them. If God is right about these world events, which nobody can predict, don't you think he's right about eternity? Don't you think he's right about sin and judgment, that if we sin, we will die and go to hell? But if we accept the penalty of our sin paid for on the cross by Jesus Christ, his son, we will be accepted into the kingdom of God. I don't think there's a better time to share the good news with somebody. So we've got all of these patterns happening. We've got at least eight signs that I can identify right now. But I want to give you a little bit more. So this is like ninth and tenth. You ready? I don't think you've heard of this before. 
I put Jupiter up there. Why is Jupiter there? Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. It has always been dubbed the king planet. Obviously because of its size, but also because it has a relationship or association to the king of kings. It's a symbol of the Messiah. Now Jupiter will do something very interesting in the next few years. This is uh, somebody who's on YouTube named Scotty from Eternal Rhythm Flow is his channel. And he found this out, and I want to read it to you. The king planet will go into Vir Virgo's womb, or germinate, Virgo, on the 20th of November, 2016. It will then go into ret retrograde motion within Virgo for 41 weeks, or the perfect length of a normal gestation period, and is then birth, or exits Virgo's womb, on the 9th of September, 2017. What are the chances of that? Well, do you understand that we see the planets moving not in perfect, uh, they don't just cross the skies perfectly because we are moving around the sun and they are moving around the sun. And so sometimes when we look at a planet, it looks like it's going one way and then it backtracks and then it goes back. That's called retrograde motion. Now, no other planet out of the eight that we currently name planets no other planet can have a retrograde motion within Virgo for exactly 41 weeks, which is the time that a woman would normally give birth. If you go into the inner planets, like Mercury and Venus and Mars, their retrograde motion is just boop, very quick, just very short. If you go out to the far planets like Saturn, Neptune, uh, Uranus, Neptune, then the retrograde motion can be very long. But if you look within this time period, which is prophetically significant, the king will go into the virgin's womb and stay there during a perfect pregnancy period and exit out in 2017. Now, Jesus has already come once. We believe that. But his second coming is much like a rebirth. So we've got the king planet doing something very unusual inside of the Virgin constellation. Startling, bizarre, strange. Now we've got probably the most unusual thing. And I was very skeptical about this, but I've been looking at the evidence and I'm going to present it to you some other time. If we have the time, I'll present it. If we don't have the time, this video's it. You have to look it up yourself. But there is something else coming according to many astronomers. And it's called, it's been called Planet X. Planet X is not some weird prophecy planet. It is a real planetary body that astronomers have been looking for for hundreds of years. If you don't understand the science of it, the way that we find planets that we cannot see in the telescope, especially back in hundreds of years ago when the telescopes were not powerful enough, scientists through pure math would calculate the motions of the planets we do see. And if it moves in an unusual way, it's called a, uh, a perturbance or a perturbation. And based on the perturbance or the, the, the way that it's perturbed, they calculate there must be another body nearby perturbing it. And that's how we found planets like Uranus and Neptune. Now, when they found Neptune, they realized something is perturbing Neptune. And so they found Pluto. But then Pluto has recently been degraded to a dwarf planet. It doesn't qualify as a planet because it's just way too small. It's probably one of the moons of Saturn or Jupiter that got flung out at some point. It, it's just too small. It's not, uh, quali it's, it doesn't qualify to perturb anybody's orbit. And so scientists have always been looking for a planet X. The, the, the ninth planet, or the tenth planet, if we had kept the nine planets, including Pluto. Now, I've been looking at some science, and I've been looking for a long time because I, I just wasn't sure about this. But I have come across uh, a fascinating astronomer who's a Christian, and I've been in touch with him. And he's been answering my questions because I look at the stuff that's out there on YouTube and on, on um, readily available on PDF, and I just, I still had problems with it. 
But he personally answered my questions, and now I am much more convinced that there is something that has come in the past, and it looks like every time it came, it triggered a, an event of biblical proportion. And so if you time the events in the Bible where you got things like the sun standing still at Joshua's war, or Noah's flood, and then the end of Noah's flood, which happens to be 150 days, this thing comes at an elliptical orbit far out from the, from the solar system. It comes into the inner solar system, and from the time that it crosses Earth's orbit and then recrosses Earth's or orbit, because it's very elliptical, is 150 days. So it, it coincides with the major catastrophe of Noah's flood, and it coincides with a bunch of other events in the Bible, and it coincides with some astronomers' records um, that used to live in China, Chinese astronomers. And so I've been looking at all this, and at some point I'll be ready to share with you a little bit, but I'm just going to give you the punchline. Because according to this man who's the most researched on this subject, as a scientist, he's making a prediction. Now NASA has reported on this back in the 80s, back in the 90s, and then they went silent. Uh, Voyager 1, Voyager 2, and then I think some other one, but at least those two, they were sent out exactly where this planet X is presumed to be. So the conspiracy guys got a lot to work on here because we're expecting something coming from that direction, and that's exactly where we sent two of our space probes into the limits of the solar system. Now, if you spend billions of dollars on space probes, I think you better pick which side of the solar system you're going to send this thing out to. And they send it towards planet X. So it's a real concern. Is there something coming, or has it already entered our solar system that we know, and this is what's triggering a lot of the changes around the planets, including our earthquakes, sinkholes, and magnetic changes, North, North Pole moving around a lot. Is this all happening because of planet X? So anyway, you want to know the date that he predicts it's going to come? The next Earth flyby is estimated to be, no one's perfectly sure, but this is the best educated guess. It will come on the 26th of March, 2016. And this is predicted by Gil Broussard. All right, this is the Christian astronomer. And the approach of another, orb, uh, of another planet on an elliptical orbit could be responsible for unpredictable comets and asteroids and a field of debris. And this is now what's happening is we got these comets uh, coming in that were used to be we could predict them 30 years ahead of time. Now they're just coming in, and we didn't know they were coming. We've got asteroids that come, and we're supposed to have all these satellites out there. We got like 600 satellites flying around Earth. Not one of them picked up the, the meteor that fell on Russia in Siberia. So it seems like something is getting thrown out and things are being perturbed in our solar system as we speak. So that may be the gravitation of another planet coming in. It could be responsible, as I said, for the major uh, earthquakes, sinkholes. Uh, also, there's a lot of methane gas being released from under the oceans. Maybe this is a disturbance of the crust, and that's what's killing a lot of the sea creatures that are floating up and dying. It's on the news all the time. The scientists also predict that this may account for the 100-pound hailstones that the book of Revelation says is coming. That's one of the signs. That's one of the... The, the judgment events in Revelation. Well, we've never seen 100-pound hailstones. Why would it happen? Because if there's a flyby that disturbs Earth's poles, it could actually bring all of the cold weather from the North Pole suddenly down, say, to the equator. If you have such a major fast shift in weather, the prediction is you could have the entire like, layer of atmosphere freeze. Now, if you have a layer of the atmosphere freeze, you don't have rain coming down. You don't even have hailstones coming down. We'll have something we've never seen before. We'll have sheets of solid ice falling on people's head. Will that make people angry at God and blaspheme God who never paid attention to the signs of revelation? I think so. How could it happen? A flyby of planet X could possibly do that. And that's according to the scientists. Smarter than me. Right, if this is new to you, if you don't know any of this before, I recommend you educate yourself on a couple of things that we've done. Undeniable proof we're living in the end times. It's a full hour of, of, of evidence 
that may be hard to find, but we've gathered them together for your benefit. Not only can you educate yourself, you could give this as a gift to someone so that they know the Bible's true. Also, a Christian look at astronomy, aliens, and UFOs. Right, If anything uh, strange starts coming out from the sky, this is a great tool that we did ahead of time to prepare people because Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the coming of Son of Man. Something strange happened in the days of Noah. You look at Genesis 6, the Nephilim were born. Angels made it with women. Strange things happen. And then we produce all the giants. They produce all the giants called the Nephilim that became the lore, the legends, the myths of ancient cultures everywhere. Thailand's got them called Yak. The Greeks got them called them Atlantis, Titans, everywhere you go. And we have the, the architecture of these guys remaining on Easter Island, Peru, Egypt, all over the place. Great monoliths that we, till today, we can't lift, we can't move, we can't, we can't even build structures uh, like they did. All right? So we've got a lot of things. I, I'm just touching on it quickly. It's all there. All right? Jesus says, when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws near. Practical thing you should do, watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. I'm just reminding you because common Ison is coming, the Tetrad's coming, and I just want you, you to be stirred up to go out and share the good news with people. We don't have to be afraid because we're watching, we're praying, we're going to be counted worthy to escape. But many, many other people don't know the information you just heard within the last 30 minutes. It'd be so easy to share this information with other people. Amen? So let's pray for them. If you don't know Jesus Christ, all you have to do is repent of your sins and just say, Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I put my trust in you, Jesus. You died on the cross to pay for my sins. You rose again on the third day. You defeated death, hell, and the grave. I put my trust in you. You're my Messiah. You're my Lord. You're my Savior. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life. He hears that prayer. You just pray that. He hears it. He answers it. And heaven will be your home. All right? Make sure you never take the mark of the beast. Whatever that mark is that prevents you from buying and selling if you don't have it, don't take any mark on your forehead on your hand or on your forehead the bible says categorically that if anyone does that they cannot be saved right so whatever that is by the time you watch it you may know but we just say ahead of time put your faith not in the world system not in the antichrist not in some charismatic leader but put your faith in yeshua hamashiach jesus christ of nazareth he's coming soon amen